Hello viewers, my name is Victor Ogwenka. You're welcome to Vanguard Life and it is again today in the news. Trust this meets you well and trust you're having a great day already. We are here to serve you hot the headlines and the talking points from all around the nation, from north to west, south to east. We want the same thing everybody keeps talking about. And yes, until we get it right in Nigeria, we'll continue to push to have a better nation. And that is why we say God bless Nigeria on this show. I'm not doing this alone. I have with me Emmanuel Okoba. Emmanuel Okoba is a um, He's a co-host, yes. He's a co-host today. <laughs> Good morning, the man. Yeah, um, um all, all the news on the headline and let, let's just take it quickly and um, you know see what we can make of it. Of course, we're starting with the vanguard. So insecurity, Danjuma, like what others take Nigeria's case to the UK. But that's on page eight of um the Vanguard, you know, and it has riders Asemota Dongo Yaru and Igbogu. Ojaye or Paleke Hyundai on the delegation. Buari fighting jihad. Christian elders tell UK say Nigeria needs democracy, not Sharia. Uh, Danjuma, Le Court, others, they are former um, military officers, I believe. And then um, you would think that this year, Nigeria should be over, close to 60 years now. Yes, close. Yeah, and to think Sorry. that. Um, at this age, we cannot handle our affairs by ourselves. Imagine a man of almost 60 years still reporting uh, issues uh, issues of, of his family to external uh, persons because he cannot handle them. It's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's, kind, it's a kind of shame. Get. So what are they? Are they expecting uh, the the UK. the the UK to come and help us fight the insecurity? Come and scold, to come and, to come and scold us. <laughs> okay, it's um, really, really, you know, it's if you want to ask for help, then you should just you know do it in a more diplomatic setting. Exactly. Not going one after the other to report this person to that person and take case. What case exactly are they taking? Were they sent by the federal government? To, are they doing it as concerned Nigerians? Are they? You know, it doesn't. Uh, either from um, uh, it doesn't look like they were sent by the federal government. It doesn't look so. Part of if you read through the story, you will see where it, uh, they were talking about reporting President Buhari to yeah. the UK that he's trying to Islamize, yeah, uh, has a Islamization agenda and, and the rest. So this this not um, uh, they were not sent by the federal government. Mm. They are doing this of their own. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. That is what it is there. And then still on that page eight, we have stronger laws needed to tackle crime. That is coming from the IG at that moment. You know, when I saw this headline first time, then I was asking, who, who should what, we're talking about stronger laws? We shouldn't be talking about. Um, let's talk about straight solution. What is what are those laws? You know. Yeah. What well, what are what are those what are those laws in place that are trying to. They have some laws already. Of course. So you're a criminal, you get arrested. You know, you, you you get prosecuted over time. So if it has to be stronger law, what 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 are we supposed to? What are those laws supposed to be? The ones that are on ground now, mm. how effective have they been? They've uh, they've arrested people. They've, they've they've it is you know as as flexible as it can be. It can always be improved upon. But what what worries me is there is always a law for a crime. How do we are we trying to be stronger or are we trying to implement those laws already existing? You know, the um, that's coming from the Special General of Police. Yes. Well, if if he, he came in not too long ago. Yes, and yeah. it was so if, if, for yes, if he if he feels there are some uh, laws in place that are not um, okay that he wants to fix, mm. then Fine, but I think the whole security system, the whole police system, they need a total overhaul. I, I think we are on it already. Yes, you know, the it white paper solution. I think, and the if, if, if this is a part of it, then fine. But then, if, if you have to talk about a stronger law, do you have a recommendation for the president? Uh, stronger law in um, let's in stronger law in one sense, like exactly what exactly are we talking about? In terms of stronger law, what are we expecting? Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't believe we want to tow the uh, line of a uh, capital punishment, like uh, for the use of uh, electric chairs and and the um, cutting up of heads. Is that is that are those the stronger laws are talking about now? Well, we we, we don't know. I don't think I don't think you, you should you should get to that. You should not get to that. The ones on ground now, I think uh, 
we are practicing practicing them and so far mm. you if if someone commits a crime he gets to do time yeah yeah he go, he gets um goes to court if he's found guilty he gets to do time i think just minor 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 changes should be added and not uh, who who would like to know the stronger laws he's talking about first thing he should let us in on those stronger laws he wants us to start um, using mm. all right um you, you know we're talking about the inspector general of police at that moment on page 8 of the Vanguard saying stronger laws needed to tackle crimes. Well, we will continue to hope that we have them, a lasting solution. Good for the president and the um, you know, former president, um, head of state, Ibrahim Abangeda, yesterday was saying that this is going to end soon. He was so sure that it's going to end soon. You know, the insecurity issue in Nigeria. And the IG is saying there should be a stronger law. So everybody keep going on the same path. So just maybe. Let's, you let's know, believe there's a light at the end of the, yes. the tunnel. If there's any tunnel at all. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Senate leadership. APC here to zone position to south south. That is talking about a caucus group. That APC here to zone position to south south. They picked from the, 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 picked from, you know, presidency. Is, is yeah, that I all was, there? I was seeing, um, I was. I saw in the news yesterday where a South South group was um, demanding that the position of deputy senate president be given to them, like it's, uh, a, a bed right. Mm. But now this the APC saying they have not zoned uh, any position to South South, so uh, it's, it's left to see what their agitation. So, uh, as long as the head position are occupied, the rest can fight it out for whatsoever they want. I think I think there there is a they they have they have a way to do it, like the zone positions to different oh, yeah. and I think each each zone is entitled to a key position and they rotate it. Yeah I think yeah, so um let's 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 see how what comes of comes that out one. of that. Yeah, yeah. still on page eight we have two thousand and eight two thousand nineteen UTME twenty nineteen UTME no cut off marks yet says Jam. We, we waited a while for the results now the result is out and we have to prepare a cut off. It was two hundred before yeah. Right. Yes. Then he he dropped to what? It, it, they, they, presently, there is no cut off. No cut off. And you know, they, they probably would want to check the the average of the results and see the those that got and you know, cut off. yes, which is them. Um, but of course, we know what it is. The whatsoever cut off, these people are coming up with. If it doesn't go in tandem with what the, the you know their institutions are expecting, there will still be another clash it's where they said no, we are not going to take the jam cut off. And some people that made the cutoff would eventually not still not get you know, Yes, I, I think that has to have the permanent solution also because this cutoff going back and forth is becoming um, something quite embarrassing. It looks like Jam is trying to impose. That, that, those are some of the um, you know the accusations that Jam is trying to impose something on the, the university the system, universities. and they were not comfortable with that. Exactly. Okay. So, so this is another thing that um, may likely come up. And if, if they have to make up this, then they should probably have a general meeting with their institutions and together to come to an agreement, agreement on what it should be. On what the cut-off mark. Because JAM we have their own cut-off mark. Institutions will have their own cut-off mark. Yeah. You know, so that's um, something. But yes, while we wait for that, that is um, from JAM. So no cut-off mark yet, says JAM on page 8 of the Vanguard. Then again, we move to page 33. Why militants put off declaration of Niger Delta Republic on June 1? Why, why? The Niger Delta militants they have been on this for a very long time. They we don't know what uh, went on behind closed doors. Mm. Get, but at least at, we, are, we, are, we have not heard of um, any shootings or any killings. Yeah, which, is quite commendable. which is quite commendable. And then um, we would like to know what what um, why okay why militants put off declaration yeah. of Nigerian Delta Republic? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever reason it was that made them put off the declaration, yeah. <laughs> it's good news at least we're not, we're not fighting. And uh, I can say how careful you're trying yes. to be talking about Nigerian Delta. <laughs> I'm from Nigerian Delta, so, and I, I wonder when I'm traveling there, I want to come back in one piece. <laughs> you know, then again, there, there's a militant from Nigerian Delta. There's Biafra for the South. South, East. yeah, South. They are just trying to have another republic, the Biafra Republic themselves. 
<laughs> how many how many units do they want to split Nigeria into? Well, maybe Nigeria should decide if they want to stay <laughs> in one unit or, or not. Okay, um, let's move away from that. That's on page 33 of the Vanguard. Why militants put off declaration of Niger Delta Republic June 1. Yes, and then on page 39, we have the Olu Wars 2. Olu Wars, sorry, the Olu Wars 2. Olu Wars of Olu. I mean, I've heard about Olu Wars, talked about Olateru. Uh, um, at the Begi that passed on some yeah, couple of yeah. months ago. So don't allow repeat of 1999 bloodbath. Community leaders won. No, one thing common with the um, installation of new kings after the passing of the mm. previous one is the politicking that most times turn bloody. Mm. You get. So I think we should we should have we should have moved past that stage of fighting and killing ourselves when it comes to installation of kings. Everybody should have an understanding that it is an election process, it should yeah. be free and fair. Mm-hmm. And then when the winner emerges, everybody should agree that this is the winner, is the winner and, winner. and allow peace reign. Well, so, something is just something just came through my head right now that uh, if um, you know someday someday the Queen of England has to leave, well, is there going to be? We don't, a, we, we don't hear them fighting. We, we know up to the tenth person. We know the person that we, even even the way she is now. We know we, we know the person that is going to succeed her already. Even to help us the tenth generation. You see, you know, so, so why, but we should have it. We should move beyond this stage of uh, killing yeah. and fighting over. Um, you know, but then when there's selfish interest and yes. everything, it leaves us at the back foot. Okay, so the Allah was two. Don't allow repeat of nineteen ninety nine bloodbath. Community leaders warns, and that's on page thirty nine. Yeah, very quickly. Let us move to page six again. The 28-year-old man stabbed to death in Enugu for seizing girlfriend's phone. That's that's terrible. How far did he get? That's I don't know. You seize the phone and the next thing is stabbed to death. What stabbed to death for seizing his girlfriend's yes phone. <laughs> how, do, how do we explain this? I, I <laughs> Stop for for over over for, is it that is it that that been what that been a running? I think they must have been having a running. Um, uh, issue relationship issue and that's why it's advised that before you date or marry anybody mm. understand the kind of person that person mm. is you get mm. she must have been noticing this um, um domestic should i use the word domestic violence now mm. or tendencies. These tendencies in the mm. guy but stayed put and mm. that's cost her life mm. just um, you know you know sometimes when we see something as um you know as trivial as this then you begin to ask yourself how did it degenerate to this level? Just like you said. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, by the time we have to summarize everything, it will make it look like for just stealing the phone, you killed someone. There might have been a, a tussle for a very long time when you are supposed to have left. You know, if it's not working. But, but you still, you know, that, na- Nigerians we are very patient people. We uh, like yeah, uh, we are patient with everything. Yes, yeah, patient, patient with everything. Patient with, with our leaders. Patient with our leaders. With 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 so but we talk. We were just as beating a. Uh, the normal trait of a Nigerian. Yeah, okay. And so, um, that, that's, that's life, yeah, yeah. very unfortunate. Someone has to die for seizing a phone. 28 year old man stabbed to death in Enugu for seizing girlfriend's phone. Apparently, it wasn't the girlfriend that stabbed that guy. Too, you know, of course, it must have not been the girlfriend. Probably would have been people from Enugu. So, that's on page six. If you want that news, that's good for you to see. Then, um, on page 12, we have security. Okowa Obaseki meet in Asaba, chat common front. You know, to tackle and combat security, talking about in the south south. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in the south south. Their brother, Governors. their brother states. So yes, the brother states. It's only right that they meet and, and talk about that. Yeah, very good. The then um, uh, uh, on page fourteen, Buhari Saraki condo with this day MD over white death. The very tragic loss yeah, yesterday. Yeah, the media yes, so we 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 have Vanguard yeah. also also sent our condolences yes, to the MD's wife. Yeah, okay, and then let us see what we have for Mr. and Mrs. Every woman wants Mr. Right, but not every woman is lucky to have one. When women are fortunate <laughs> to have them, don't appreciate them. You know, talking about having a Mr. Right. Yeah, women who get Mr. Right don't, they don't appreciate them. them. And then he came to say that, oh, you think you are Mr. Right? Your name is Right. Right with the W. <laughs> I'm not Right. I, lo- I, like, I like what the but, the, but, the, but the, the response is this interesting. I'm not going to take the response. Maybe you just go and see it on the Vanguard yourself and understand the, that savage yeah, response, response you know, <laughs> coming from Mr. It never disappoints. You know, yes, and that is about it on the front page 
of the Vanguard. But yes, we have Colon from Gambodori today, Dele Cole and Amechi. You should check that up and then catch up with your favorite columnist on the Vanguard. And we'll move straight to the nation with the major headline assets CCB to probe Mark Odua Uzadin, my others. A boy wreck official under investigation for alleged bribery. Uh, uh, the the guy in charge of this um, in charge of this Okon uh, Obla, mm. the presidential panel for uh, recovery of assets, he has been doing a, a good job over time. I've had um, I've read news of uh, people he has um, um, convicted mm. and retrieved um, mm. reasonable uh, items from how mm. assets and the rest. Mm. But if you look at the People in question here, it's even fair because uh, Hopus Odima, who was the, the governorship candidate for the APC, yeah. we just the election, is also there. So it's not one side. It's not the one side. It's not fight. like he's um, chanting the PDP. Yeah. APC is involved in this, so it's fair. As, as a matter of fact, as long as the person there's a question on anybody's head, the person should the person should act. face. Yes, it does not matter where you are coming from, unless you just want to be political and yes. say it's coming from somewhere. It's it's if it's corruption, then it's corruption. It's corruption. Okay, and um, community worried over one thousand air pollution health as a talking about World Environment Day yesterday. You know, and on the front page of the nation, you see a woman displaying a dead fish. It's a very big fish, but the boat died in the, in the in the process of pollution. Pollution, and then you know it it's, it's, it's one of the issues we are fighting with. Yeah, no, it's not, it's, and it's not a, it's not a, just Nigeria alone. Yeah. It's the whole world now. Mm. Yes. there yeah. was a report of how plastics. If we don't, if we don't um, take care of the plastics or okay. water, this mm. like, over time, we, we lose. Um, the water world, that is the fishes and whatever, and things yeah. in the water. So, I think they, they, are, they are putting measures in place to tackle the uh, form of cor uh, pollution yeah. mentioned there. Yeah. And I believe everybody should follow follow in line. Yeah. What it is? Okay, yeah, uh, that is on um, on the nation. Lastly, on the nation, there are twenty inmates rescued as Oyo police raid shrine. We 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 continue to talk about this in in two thousand and nineteen. A shrine. Yes, <laughs> they are inmates. <laughs> Twenty inmates. Do they have a prison cell in that shrine? <laughs> you, of course, you, you you know what it feels like. This is not the first time we are hearing of um, kidnappers, then you know, the ritualist hideouts and all of all those things. And what are those patronizing? What are those patronizing those people? Yeah, oh boy. I believe. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, um, um, it's, it's, it's surprising that uh, and it's embarrassing, embarrassing at the same time. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, away from that, let's go to the Guardian. The Nigerian's yearly stolen fund worth 62% of 2019 budget. So, 62% of, 62 of our 2019 budget has been stolen. Has been stolen. Yes. And we're still out there. Who is retrieving this money? Wonderful. No wonder we have to borrow over and over again to. Um, meet up with the budget. Yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's okay. So now that we know sixty-two percent of this budget is stolen, analysts propose ways to stop illicit financial flows. I think this is one for the EFCC and the ICPC. Exactly. They don't just go on board and retrieve as much as they can retrieve, and we'll take it from here. But then again, uh, we, we look at um, stealing uh, from public office order as a lucrative business because they know where it all ends. The moment there is a, a court the first time and the second hearing, the person is granted bail. I think that is almost about all from what we've seen in the time past. Then again, you 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 accuse someone of uh, someone allegedly stole maybe five billion and the person got a two hundred million naira bail bail bail, bail, bail fund. What, what do you think? Is that this not is where this is the person becomes the president, the governor again after some time? Earlier, we talked about the IGP seeking uh, stiffer laws against the uh, kidnapping, and other you should not stop as only kidnapping, it should also extend to people who steal mm -hmm. um, uh, public, public funds. Yes, yeah. you get, and when they, when, when they are found guilty, they should face. The time, mm. yeah. and if you stop giving, giving a ridiculous, um, for like you, like you said, someone that stole five million dollars. There was a case one time of someone that stole a very, I, I don't quite remember the amount now, but he was given um, bail of 
I think 750,000 naira on the spot. He wrote the check. <laughs> it's like failure, tight. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's very, 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 very ridiculous. Yeah. And you see that 62% of 2019 budget is stolen. Wow. Mm, it's, a, it's, a, it's big, you know. It's, it would have been easier for us to, so, to source for the And then we we'll have to borrow, to, like yeah, I said, to, to, to source for the remaining 38% and everything. But that is where we are. You can get that on The Guardian. And also on The Guardian, we have um, EFSAS brutalizes threatens to kill journalists in rivers. As one of the hazards of the job. Can, can three months just come already and let us get um, the, the reports from that panel and so that we know where we belong eventually? There's too much noise about the FSAs and nothing is changing. You know, so maybe uh, at the end of that white paper, we would have something that would give us a lasting solution from this. This is embarrassing. You can't threaten to kill journalists. Journalists doing, like I said, it's one of the hazards of the job. But uh, the journalist that is going about his normal job yes and so this is uh, supposed to be someone protecting the journalist protecting the journalist and now you are threatening to you know be sad and, and just day before yesterday another journalist was kidnapped the nation journalist you know was kidnapped somewhere else and you, you, you know so we, we suffering from both ends from those that should be protecting you and from those that they should be protecting you from they are all attacking you all in the middle what so where, where, where do we run to you no know, no that's um <laughs> That that's something that has to be done urgently, and and I'm even glad the way you mentioned the other time that the IGP should think about stiffer punishment for everything that has to be not just crime and corruption, not just banditry, not just kidnapping. There's all of all those things. Just maybe when there's a stiffer law, people will, you know get um, more cautious of what they should do or what they shouldn't do. So um, that is um, about all. Let, let us go to the trust. The trust has. What we are doing about Abacha's three hundred million by FG three hundred million dollars. It was two hundred and eleven million pounds. Yes, three hundred million dollars. So it says money not to be shared with US Jersey. Yeah, it seems the, the late Abacha even in debt is still wealthier than Nigeria. The whole of Nigeria. The whole of Nigeria <laughs> and even some nations, Nigeria and addition to some, you know, so, some nations are. <laughs> let's not go into that. But yeah. like I said. We were saying we we're speaking before we we're talking about mm. this before we came on air. Yeah. Like I, I said that mm. this Abacha loot may just be um, a form of cover up for some politicians who are trying to hide from um, from EFCC yeah. because by the time you mention Abacha, you, you cannot go and arrest Abacha away, he's already dead. Yes. So everybody can just hide behind the Abacha loot mm. to do whatever it is they want to do. <laughs> that, uh, but then again, it, it, it's a, it's a two-way street. Exactly. If, if, if there's money recovered and someone says it's for Abacha and it's being covered up by maybe the um, anti-graph agents that is supposed to be controlling it, that means there must have been an agreement that let us see. So it is a very dangerous... Well, let's put it this way. It's the most important thing is that we, we got our money back. We've not gotten it back. We, we, we are getting it we have it. Well, it's in people. The most important thing is that we are getting it back. Okay. So, <laughs> but this one, we need this money urgently, uh, you know, to fund the budget. Exactly. But then, um, okay, then anyway, from that we have um, why I entrusted Nigerian Treasury with women. That's President Buhari. He was accused last... Um, time of not giving women enough um, mm. position in his government yeah. that if he's doing this now then this is a good one okay. i think he's, he's, he's going to pull some surprises this this term he has he started on a good note and, 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 and next week might just be a very interesting you know a week for, he, for this administration. He, um, he agreed to the establishment of a local government uh, local government. police and uh, state police the other time mm. yeah mm. so if this one is coming again it means Okay, but but then again, why I trusted Nigerian treasury with women? That women better treasury keepers than men. If you want to have a safe home, you, you give. You give <laughs> you don't go women that. are better planners when it comes to um, handling handling of uh, treasures and looking in this sense money. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, well, really, you know, well, of course, we we on, on the last on the last thing, if it means anything. On that um, headline where he said, you, you know, um, that they have to prove that that's on Vanguard here, yeah? where you have to prove some persons. You know, we, we have men, we have women, but of course more men than women. So I, it's, I agree with you. 
Okay, so um, NCC Nigeria ready for 5G technology. 5G? That's, that's, that's 4G gone round already. <laughs> it was our communities now have uh, 2G. 2G. And this is yes. NCC saying Nigeria is ready for We're, we're looking forward, we, we're, we're looking forward to where we have um, Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi everywhere. We, we are looking forward from who's... We, 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 we hope we get to that. We, we cannot we cannot really start mentioning names here. But if uh, they are coming with 5G even after we have not if we have not even most people don't even understand, don't even know what they call 4G. Mm. Get? <laughs> we, have, we have not swallowed the one they gave us, they are putting another one into our mouth. Yeah. But if, if it will make a connectivity better, then fine. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, we, 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 we have about close to a hundred million, you know, Nigerians using sophisticated phones. So oh. we'll be ready when it comes on board. Okay, um, and on the punch, the presidency meets power frames over electricity crisis. It has, been a, it has been a lingering issue. It has been with us since forever. It is. Forever. Is it going to end anytime soon? Uh, let, let's hope the the outcome of this meeting will um, will put us on a path that uh, that will resolve resolve some of the issues we have in the electricity yeah. um, sector because it's, it's sad when it's sad when um, you don't use power and then at the end of the month they give you they, they call it estimated bill yeah you have to pay through your nose for power you know it's for that month you, you know there was a discussion here on vanguard life on oil and gas and um, you know show yesterday yeah, yes. and then nigerians were reacting you know with pains on what they go through on estimated bills and then the electricity, the electric power supply in their area and all of all those things. It mirrors that things like this should, they, they, there needs to be a state of emergency declared on things like this. We've known, you know, people, you know, what gets more interesting is people talk about a better nation, um, that Nigeria had once been better in the 60s or in the 70s or, or things like that. But there were some people that came just after those days that have never seen a better Nigeria. They don't understand. Maybe we should just do an, an a vox pop. Maybe we should just speak with people and ask them that what is their ideal Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. Then you'll be shocked that some people might just tell you that um, 12, 12, maybe just 12, um, 12 hours power supply a day would do. So, but let us just start running the poll from here. You, know, you, you know? we, we, the other day we we spoke here. You read something from social media where someone said. A hard light for how many days that someone is not doing the <laughs> job or something. Just because it so, was rainfall. Yes. <laughs> the, the, even even with the rainfall, bad. there was still power. So yes, and so someone, feels that there is not, you know. So if if, if 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 that's the thinking we have now, it means uh, is is sad that we we, are, we, are, we we have to we are surprised when we have okay. power that was supposed to have on a regular. So this meeting should really um, come out with solutions. That will make our uh, electricity production better. Better. And then we are paying, we know that yes, we are paying for what we really use. Okay, if you're just joining us, this is Vanguard Live. Today in the news is what we are discussing and analyzing, you know, the front pages of the of, of the newspapers that we have. But then we, we have a poll, you can join, give your comments. Do you have an idea of what, a, of what an ideal Nigeria is for you? You can just write them a sentence of what you think your own ideal Nigeria would be and let us start the conversation from there. We would, we would just want you to see that when we're talking about a better Nigeria, what does it mean to you? Drop your comments, like and share, just so that we begin to understand what exactly we're expecting from our leaders, okay? So that is on electricity. Then, um, finally, on from that place, it says, Akiri Dulu sacks um, nine, okay, no, this, uh, let me just finish. Akiri Dulu sacks nine permanent secretaries, affected officers kick. And then also on the front page is Makinde gives Ajimo B's aid 48 hours to return government vehicles. Uh, the what? case of um, Makinde, that's in a transition process. The, um, he got sworn in 2019. Yeah. That was like a little Some over month. a week ago. Yes. So that's some that things that we need finalizing. Uh, transfer of um, properties, vehicles in this case. Might need to, but I don't. I don't really know why someone would want to hold on to um, a government property even after they have left office. So probably in time past.
some people don't mention it and maybe it they're feeling they're, property. yeah they're feeling they will just forget about it and if they didn't say anything about it they most, just most likely like they will have kept it become personal property you knew you would be out of that place a week before so you should be making arrangements everybody, which you don't have to beg you to return something for eight hours everybody should be held accountable there's still a governor trying to tell another one to hand over in and it's, it's, it's things like it's things like this that lead to waste because yes. by the time you allow them go with those ones you need to buy, you need new, to buy ones. new ones and that will be wasting money that will have been used for something better to, money. to acquire what you can easily retrieve from the previous government. Yeah. So it's, it's a good thing. Those who are holding um, government property should return them to allow the new government to do yeah. its, its work properly. Okay, um, you know, b- before we go to the social media, let us see if we have some comments here. We have Anolo Balola watching. Yes, we have Amino Katsun. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Then we have Matthias Odo watching live from Yaba. Thank you. We have NG Makwe. Says CCB is a noisemaker. Have they killed any corrupt politician? Wastes of Nigerian time. You're talking about the CCTV. I mean, the CCB yeah. panel and the probe. You know, NG say it is just more of talking than action. But just maybe you'll get surprised. NG, give them a chance. Then Shagwonlu James says watching live from Okwagbe, Delta State, Nigeria. Is that where you're from? My, my <laughs> I'm from Delta, that's a quite big. Okay, quite big. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Nzelu Obum says, watching from Mozambique. Yeah, far away, Mozambique. Then Olutola Ben watching from Silver Spring, USA. Then again, you know, we, we, we have Nze Darichi watching from Iyanopaja, Lagos. Thank you very much. And then straight away, we go to our social media go into your social media. There are some posters that we chew online, you know, this morning, trying to get reactions from Nigerians and what they came, you know. Th- there's a news on, on Vanguard website saying, Ayodhya has no program, only want to squander 42.5 billion I left behind. That is a correct reply in Emeka Ayodhya, the new governor of Imo State. And then the, the, the argument is, you know, all around, and the Nigerians have been talking. Emeka Achuna says, I would not have believed that this man would end up being a crook, but it just happened, you know, getting angry and saying uh, all sorts of things. Then, then somebody is advising the former governor to go and do a proper handover. Another person sent Mele Kowe, he says, Okorocha should wake up from his sleep that his son-in-law also is not governor, you know. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there's something I saw on one of the front pages where Governor Dixon of Bayos is saying he's going to hand over to to so a PDP. PDP. I was actually th- going to. Yes, I, I, that, I wanted to take it before I mentioned the Akere Lulu case. I, um, that's, you know, those are the things that make some people lose confidence in. I think I think the process of choosing um, the next governor should be left for the electorate. Yeah. The governor should not come out and say he wants to. That, that these such statements that lead to violence because at the end of the day, if you see that a different party uh, stands a better chance of winning, no, you want to do everything possible to, make to sure put your person in, and that's where violence yeah, starts. starts. Okay, lastly, on that Ayodhya uh, or Child story, um, so Akpo Ray Rule 6 saying Ayodhya is making at Korocha more popular. He should stick to his administration and avoid distraction. But I think I think he your her. He's just coming in. Mm. He should not. Um, you should try as much as possible to uh, not to get into a war war of words with um, Okorocha. Mm-hmm. There was something he did. Okay, let me not say he did, but he reportedly did yeah. the, the dismantling of um, okay. one a tower built by. That's not the right way to go. If the they said they not yes, want okay, anyway, they're not so, the one. So, so that okay. But what would that? But the tininess of that destruction is of that questionable, is questionable among yes. other things. Okay, so away from um, Imo states and all of those, we we have another story. You know, on them um, on Vanguard website. Maybe you should just go see. It, it says speechless inauguration was wrong. And we went to Twitter and asked Nigerians, what do you think? You know, th- th- there was a paragraph there before we take the comments. Said, Some guess that the president decided to postpone his speech until New Democracy Day, which is 12th of June. Then none of these can serve as a viable excuse for what happened. A five-minute speech wouldn't have removed the low key from the event. Then we asked, what do you think? And Nigerians say, there's nothing wrong with that. We don't, uh, we don't always have to do things the same way over and over again. How many people listen to the speeches at the inauguration? Most of those who listen to it do so in order to criticize it, let the speech come on democracy day. You see, that, so while some are saying it is wrong, it looks like 
that, that was, I think it is very important that we know the kind of country we want to build, even for us as a people. It is interesting to see some people saying they don't mind if there's no speech, it can wait. Over time, I've well, noticed that um, the president, well, I say, try, tries to avoid the, the media. Mm. The, the former administration of uh, Bulogin, many times he had media chats with um, mm. journal, but I don't think you can say the same thing for um, President Muhammad Buhari. So, okay. On that day, we expected, even if it was just thank you, Nigerians, thank you, Nigerians thank you. then leave the main speech for June 12th. But nothing like that. But interestingly, I, I like the angle that this person is speaking from. This person is Aisha. The person said that he said most of those who listen to it do so in order to criticize it. So, what, what, what is it? it, it it's, not, it's not all bad. Even after you have people that criticize, you see people that will take out good points from yeah. it. A, a leader should not be um, should not run away from criticism. You get so if he, if he had given that speech and people criticize it, mm. he might have he might have seen some things that um, uh, that will have that will have been able to improve on. Mm. You get mm. and that will have reflected in his June 12 speech. Okay. Yeah. So it will have been like I said, it will have been better even if it was thank you Nigerians like you said thank you for uh, giving me this mandate for govern you for the next four years. Mm. I've been okay. A lot of people have been okay with that. We'll, we'll see. We'll just wait for June 12th, that's some six days away. Yeah. But let's hope it does not uh, yeah, pull, the same, uh, pull the same speechless tongues on us again. Ah, that would be very, very, yeah, you know, not pleasing. I, I still always remember the I belong to everyone, I belong to no one speech <laughs> of 2015. It's, um, you know, something good. Then um, Dr. Omar says, action speaks louder than words. Mm -hmm. Talking about I don't want to hear his speech, let him just act it. Then I, I then we say what do you think? Then Uto Uto says, I truly think so too. By greetings to the constituent and people that voted him and pretend to extend one greetings to those he had studied didn't vote him. You know, with or without the speech, yeah, we still have negative vibes. Make it back well. You know, talking mm -hmm. about this. Um then he had nothing to say to Nigerians and the people managing him tried to avoid him embarrassing himself and that was why they didn't allow him to give any speech, not minding how Nigerians would feel. Embarrassing himself in what sense? In what sense? You know, he didn't say so we we'll leave it at that for him. Then in more Abasi Jacob says always making excuses. Then Samson Alonga says damage control. Wintop says please tell yours. Okay. He says, please tell your sponsor as well, okay with Baba, as you have turned yourself to... No, it is just a simple question of um, way to go about this. Then, um, some other person is saying something that is not so... Like, abusing the president, we are not going to take that. No. Well, then, yes. Then, Emily Olisa says, eh, I think this is his first shock, as he promised. We would shock people in the second tenure. So, we, we move away from that. Let us... Um, Let's see, maybe quickly let us let us let us take one or two from. I know there's thought there's, there's Thursday thoughts and there's Thursday motivation. Motivation or thoughts for you? Um, whatever you do, just try to stay safe. Okay, so uh, let, let's let's see what Nigerians are saying. He said the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. No, there, there, was, there, there was there was a time there was a time someone said. Uh, even pessimism has an upside, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's not all gloom and doom for. Okay, then uh, finally on that one, it says courage is knowing it might hurt and doing it anyway. Stupidity is the same, and that is why life is hard. Quoting from Jeremy Goldberg. Cor cor courage is knowing it might hurt. Yes, courage is knowing it might hurt and doing it anyway. Then stupidity is the same. It might hurt, but then the difference is you just you know that is why life is hard. To make a decision that is how far we will be able to go today um today in the newspaper um today in the news on vanguard life and i've been doing this with emmanuel Okuba. thank you for coming thank you. and yes we hope to have you here again i would always have you here if <laughs> you know thank and um a special thanks again to the woman Kole handling the camera and making this happen my name is victor Ogunika. see you next time <laughs>